Let's discover together all the new features coming to Elementor version 4. We're going to explore the new classes system and many other features that are coming our way. In this case, to test this stuff, you should use a testing website or a staging environment, and you have to make sure to have the Elementor 3.29 version active. So let's update to the 3.29. Both the pro and the free version of Elementor should be updated. Okay, now that we are running Elementor 3.29, we can go and find into the Elementor settings a new tab, which is called Editor version 4. You can see here that it is suggesting you to be careful and use this only on staging and testing environments. So we can enable this in my case, because I am into a tutorial website and uh, I will create a new page Wow, using Elementor version 4, this is great. Once I enable this, I can see that I have all these new widgets coming here, but now they're called Atomic Elements. I like this new name, actually. We still have just seven elements here, but I believe that in the next months, we're going to see more and more Atomic Elements coming on our way. All these elements are very, very well optimized, and they are basically rebuilding from the ground up the way that we are going to create websites using Elementor. In fact, when we add this new elements, we see the first thing that uh, each and every element here has just two tabs, the general one and the style tab. The general is specific to this single element. In this case, for example, the Flexbox element has just an HTML tag selector and link selector here. But if I add new elements, for example, a heading, I will see in the general tab more content, for example, the title, the tag, and so on. The style tab is going to be the same for all the different elements. This is huge. So basically, when we learn how to use this new style tab, we will become very familiar with a single way to style and manage all the design of our elements, which is huge. As you know, in fact, all the current widgets of Elementor has different style tabs for each and every element. You see, for example, in the heading, I have some style and control, while if I add another element, for example, a button, I have a different styling controls. You see here? So basically, it is quite difficult to <laughs> remember where all the styling settings are and which widget I can do what. So the fact to have a unified style tab, I think it is a very smart move. Thank you, Elementor. Another great news is the fact that we can now use classes and uh, we can apply them if you want to style globally all your elements, titles, buttons, images, divs, whatever you want to do, you can now do it using classes. But of course, you can still edit things locally. For example, if you do not want to use classes and still use Elementor as a basic page builder without creating global system, you can go and edit things locally. You see, this local highlighted element means that you're basically editing only the single widgets that you have selected. Selected. But if you want to, you can create a class, for example, for all the main titles of your website, which is awesome. And when you want to change the styling, when you have global classes applied like this, you just need to go on the element which has that class enabled. You just select the class, as you can see here now, this class is highlighted, and you can basically go and perform whatever change you want. Let's say that this font is not looking very good and the client says, oh, please change the font. I can go here and do it in a single click. This is awesome. I really like this new design system. And using the new design system, I can also apply pseudo classes and states. You see here, for example, I can change the hover behavior of my elements. Now I have my class and the hover status is highlighted. And I can see that uh, all the elements that I have already customized using the main class are highlighted in gray with these gray dots, while the elements that I'm modifying right now with the hover status are being highlighted with this green bright color. Let's say that now I want to change the hover color and make it, for example, something more like this, I can go here and see a preview of what's happening. That's awesome. I can also add multiple classes to my elements. Let's say, for example, that I want a class that is going to be adding a background and uh, making my elements popping up, for example. So let's call this class background pop. Now, when I add a new class, as you can see here, it's going to automatically take the higher priority. And so basically the styling that I'm adding here, they're going to override all the other styling that I have in my other classes. But I can also change this and I will show you how to do so in the class manager. So, okay, my class now is active. Let's go and make a little bit of styling. Let's increase the spacing, for example, and add a padding about two rem. Okay, and we will also add a box shadow, okay. Let's make it a little bit lighter. I will also add now a border radius and also a custom border. Okay, so now this is my background pop effect. And uh, if I want, I can enable the same class also for all my other titles. Let's go here, background pop. Okay, and let's do the same here. Okay, perfect. 
So now when I go and have a quick preview, I have applied this class to all my titles. <laughs> I really like it, <laughs> it's very fun. And uh, if I want, uh, I can also go and continue adding new classes to my element, of course. But I have to keep in mind that uh, I have to keep organized all my classes. What happens if I want to, uh, yes, keep my classes well organized? I use the class manager. I can go and save and continue here. And I see that basically here, I can use the class manager to see all the classes that I have created, plus adjust their priority, rename them and delete unused class to keep your CSF structured. This is uh, just um, a starting point, I believe, because uh, it is still way limited, the CSS manager, the class manager here. I would love to be able to search, for example, to have a search bar to find all my classes here or to group my classes with folders or tags, anyway, to keep them organized and well-structured. In my case here, if I want some classes to have priority on the others, I can just go here and switch the positioning. Let's say that uh, when I use the background pop, I want uh, my main titles class to have priority. Let's go and save changes. I can do so by just dragging and dropping here the classes. This means that, for example, if I go and edit my main class here, my main title class, and I do something about spacing background or something that may interfere with my background pop class, the title class is going to have the priority. Let's say that I want, for example, here to have a background and I apply a red background. Or oh, yes, it is not very <laughs> uh, subtle gray background like this, okay. And let's say that in my background pop, I have a different background because I'm using it maybe for also other elements throughout my website. Let's say that in this case, I have this kind of pink background. Okay, as you can see here, it is not, the pink background, it is not showing because the class that has the priority is the one that is controlling the titles. Let me show you how this works. We will reload the page, okay. And if I change my mind and I want my pop, <laughs> pop class to be priority, I can go style, open the class manager and I can go and place the background, you see? And now the background class is controlling the other classes. This is pretty good. I like it, but uh, I think that they have to improve here the user experience of the class manager because as I was mentioning, it can be very overwhelming when you have hundreds of classes to <laughs> manage, of course. And as always, for each and every element, you can still use the local class to override everything because the local class will have priority over everything. Let's say that this specific title, I want to change the color, I can go here and change it to black, for example. Wow, beautiful. Another very, very, very interesting thing about Elementor version 4, a feature that I really, really love and appreciate as a user, and I think that many of you will agree with me, is the fact that now when we use Atomic Elements, the new elements, we can basically go and style all the elements for mobile without limits. So when we are in the Style tab and we select, for example, Mobile, we can basically change every single style element and it's gonna be reflected on mobile. So we do not have limits here. Let's say that we want to change the text color only for mobile, we can do so. We can go and apply it like this. And as you can see here, the text on tablet is black and on mobile is blue. This is beautiful. We can change the font weight, of course, the alignment of the fonts and so on. And all the styling are going into effect only on mobile. Wow, huge. Let's also change the background color and this is working very well. Another very interesting feature coming to Elementor version 4 is the fact that in the Style tab, now we have styling repeaters. They call them like this at the Elementor team, and let's see what this means. We can basically go, for example, into the background to see how this works, and we can add, for example, here, many overlays as we want. This is pretty powerful. We can add a plus icon here and select an image, for example, and uh, we can then, uh, oh yes, style it, for example. We can center, center it. We can make center, center. We can go and make it, for example, cover, okay? And so on. And now the styling repeater means that we can add as many overlays as we want. So we can change it and we can use a gradient now. And we can make it a little bit more transparent so that the image below is gonna stand out a little bit more, okay? And uh, we can do so also with the other color here, this one, and make it more transparent like this. Okay, like this, perfect. And so on. So basically we can go on uh, in, a, in an infinite loop and go and um, add as many overlays as we want. Let's say that we want to add an, a, a third overlay, which is going to be a, just a simple, uh, another image, let's say, of course, this one, for example. And we can create many different designs. You see here, I have a strange face appearing like this. 
I can make it to cover like this uh, and I can create many different um, effects like this. And I can also decide to reorder the priority of these elements. For example, I can drag this image here or I can drag this, it's not working very well, the drag and drop here. You see, now the image is below the radial gradient, for example, or can, I can also place this image above or place this like this and I can play around as I want. <laughs> it is pretty interesting. And this approach here is gonna open up a lot of new possibilities. And we can also go and duplicate or um, delete or even hide just temporary a few elements. It is not working very well, as you can see here, because we are still in alpha, of course, so we need to be patient to be able to use all these functionalities into a production website. And now one last very important thing that we can uh, use right now when we upgrade to Elementor 3.29 is the new Cloud Templates library. It is pretty awesome. I'll show you now how this works. Basically, when you open up your templates library, we have the local site templates here on the left, and we have this new icon here, Cloud Templates. This is going to be available only for pro users, but it is very, very, very powerful. How this work? It is pretty straightforward. We can just save any section, content, or page into the cloud templates and be able to use it into all our Elementor Pro websites from a single place. For example, let's say that I want to save this section here and being able to use it on all my Elementor Pro websites of all my different clients. I go here, I save this as a template, and now basically you can choose if you want to save your element here into the cloud templates and access this design from all your Elementor Pro websites or if you want to save it just to your local website. You can do both, of course. Now let's see how this works. Coming soon page. Okay, I hit save. Okay, and when I go to my cloud templates, I will see my new coming soon page. I can also group all these elements in folders, which is pretty awesome. To do so, I just need to create a new folder here. I will call this folder, for example, coming soon. I create this and then I go to my element here, which is called the coming soon page, and I will just move it to my new created folder. I go here, I select my coming soon folder and I move it. <laughs> very easy to use and very useful. And now if I am on another website where I'm using my Elementor Pro license, I can go on templates and access all my saved templates like this. Wow, this is great. Coming soon, let's go and uh, insert this template, apply, and that's awesome. I also saw that you can easily save all your current single site templates directly to your cloud templates. You can go, for example, into your site templates here and you can choose the templates that you want to save. Let's say this one, you can go and move to, and then basically here you choose to move them to the cloud templates. And once you move, voila, they're gonna be saved right here. Elementor Timeline Horizontal. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think about the new functionalities coming to Elementor V4 and let me know what you think about the cloud templates. Personally, I'm very happy about the new features coming to Elementor and I think I will use them a lot. Now, if you want to stay with me here, I will leave you two of my latest Elementor Pro tutorials where I explain to you how to create Elementor Pro websites and create Elementor Pro designs. My name is Pascal, the creator of WP Roads, the YouTube channel and website where I share with you my passion and knowledge about WordPress. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and the like button if you like this kind of content. I wish you all the best with all your WordPress projects. Ciao, ciao.